So, shooters and reloaders, Fortune Cookie 45 LC come into the hot lead zone. And there are times when you might be curious as to what the groove diameter of your revolver is. Well, we know that there's really no need to slug a revolver barrel to determine the groove diameter because it really doesn't matter. What's important is the cylinder throat. And the groove diameter of the barrel is going to be smaller than the cylinder throat, which is usually caliber specific. Well, people think that the groove diameter of the barrel is caliber specific, but no, on revolvers, it's actually smaller. Well, at any rate, there is some curiosity as to what the groove diameter of barrels are, and you'll hear it often that Colts are easy to do because you slug the barrel and you measure the bullet. And Rugers are easy to do because you slug the barrel and then you measure the bullet. Well, the reason why is because the Colts and Rugers have six grooves or six lands. So that when you slug a barrel and you measure the bullet, you're going to measure from the, the groove to the groove. So you'll get the groove diameter by direct measurement. No problem. The geometry of a six groove barrel is easy to measure when you slug it. But the problem is when you try to use the same thing for a Smith & Wesson revolver barrel or auto pistol barrel. Anything that has five grooves or an odd number of grooves is very difficult to just slug the barrel and then measure the bullet because you're going to measure from a groove to a land and so your measurement's going to be off. It's not the true groove diameter. So how do you slug a five groove barrel? whether it be auto pistol barrel or a revolver barrel. Well, we'll use the Smith & Wesson Model 27 for a model here and go ahead and slug this barrel. Now, I normally wouldn't do that because there's no need to do it. But for the purpose of this video, to show how to determine the groove diameter of a Smith & Wesson, that's what we're doing. So let's go ahead and slug this barrel. So let's go ahead and slug this barrel. So what I did was I took a soft lead slug and put in some oil, three-in-one oil into the barrel first and then tapped that slug in to get it started. Now we're gonna go ahead and drive the slug through with a wood dowel. There it goes, it's starting to go, it go through. Now I'm bracing the cylinder on my leg so it doesn't get a lot of shock. Now this wooden dowel, of course, is smaller than the, than the bore diameter. And there it is. And there is our engraved lead slug. Now, of course, you see no damage to the gun at all. And of course, we made sure it was unloaded before we slugged that barrel. So you see, if you have any questions about slugging a barrel, be sure to look at the videos on that. Now, I didn't use my vice and heavy towel this time as in my other videos because that soft lead slug was moving pretty good anyway without the vise. So here's the problem. You got a five groove barrel here. These are the grooves. One groove, two grooves, three, four, and five. If you measure directly, you will measure the biggest dimension and what you'll get is the corner here to the corner there. And if you look at the geometry, you'll get a bigger reading than what the actual groove diameter is, which is from that point to a point right out of here in outer space. So I'll give you an idea of what the measurement is when you just try and take a direct measurement. Here you go. Take the biggest measurement and you'll get 353 
or 3535. So you'll be looking for bullets that are 354 or 355, almost like 9mm bullets. Thinking that that's what you want to do for uh, cast bullets at 354 or 355, well, you'll wind up letting your barrel because that's smaller than your chamber throats. Now, for those of you who notice that there's a little ding on the corner of the bullet there, that's because in handling this slug, I dropped it. But the measurement's being done back here where there's no ding. Now, there are a number of ways that these bullets can be measured. One way a machinist does it is use a V-block. And that's a different technique. It requires V-blocks and this kind of thing. And there's other gauges that can be used to uh, measure them, but very special types of gauges. What's one way that we reloaders can measure accurately at home? And here it is. So, there's the bullet. And what we do is we, we take some shim stock and we wrap the, the shim stock around the bullet. So you see how that's right on the groove diameter? We wrap the shim stock around the bullet, hold it tight so it's right against there, and then we can measure. Then if we subtract the thickness of the shim stock right here and the thickness of the shim stock right there, we will get a reading that is the true groove diameter of the barrel. Here's an example of shim stock and you see it's just thin metal, but it's very flexible. Happens to be one thousandths thick. So we wrap the shim stock around the bullet, nice and tight. Then we take a reading and we get three, five, two. 3.52. Now that's 1,000 shim stock. So, we take the 3.52, subtract 2 times the shim stock, and you get a groove diameter of 0 .350. So, shooters and reloaders out there, I guess we've dispelled the myth once again that a 357 Magnum revolver has groove diameter barrel of 357. It just isn't so. The groove diameter of the barrels are smaller than the caliber. And in this case, the groove diameter is 0 .350. So, if you're going to go ahead and get bullets that are 1,000th bigger than the groove diameter, you got to look for bullets that are 0 .351 inch. And you won't find any. Not in handgun bullets anyway. And... If you look find bullet molds, you won't find any bullet molds for handguns that are going to drop bullets at .351. Just doesn't happen. However, if you measure your cylinder for this revolver, you get .356. So you can use bullets that are .357 or .358. And that's the measurement you want to use for your revolvers. Now, if you have a 5 groove auto pistol barrel, you can go ahead and get that dimension by using this technique. Now, of course, auto pistol barrels, because the barrel is integral to the chamber, the groove diameter barrel is actually caliber specific. So if you look down a 45 ACP barrel, you will see 0 .451 or 452 groove diameter, and you'll think that is gross. Bye for now.